here you are. I've been waiting for you. There are several things we want to talk about. Tonight's objectives are, we're going to revisit transformations. We're going to read Grandfather Tang's story and an announcement of homework assignment for later. As you recall in class lately, we've been talking about transformations. Translation, reflection, and rotation. You've been putting your skills to good use. So we're going to read a little story that's going to further our experience with transformations. The title of this story is called Grandfather Tang's Story by Ann Tomper. Grandfather Tang and Little Sue were sitting under a tree in their backyard. They were amusing each other by making different shapes with their Tangram puzzles. Let's do a story about the fox fairy, said Little Sue. So Grandfather Tang arranged his seven, seven Tangram pieces into the shape of a fox. Then Grandfather Tang made another fox with Little Sue's seven Tangram pieces. Little Sue clapped her hands as her grandfather began. Although Chow and Wu Ling were best friends, they were always trying to outdo each other. One day, this rivalry almost brought their friendship to a tragic end. They were sitting under their favorite willow tree beside a river talking about their magic power. I can change myself into a rabbit as quick as a wink, boasted Wu Ling. I'll bet you can't do that. I can too, said Chow. Cannot, said Wu Ling. Anyway, Actions speak louder than words. He changed himself into a rabbit. Not bad, said Chow, smoothing his whiskers, but watch me do better than that. And before Wu Ling could blink, Chow changed from a fox into a dog. Now when Chow changed himself into a dog, he not only looked like a dog, but he felt like a dog and acted like a dog. He bared his teeth and lashed his tail. Wu Ling shivered and twitched his nose. I love rabbits, Chow growled, and I'm going to get you and gobble you up. The dog edged closer and closer. Wu Ling's eyes grew bigger and bigger. He was too frightened to move at first, but then he thought, I'll be safe if I can climb up the willow tree. His little puff of a tail grew long and bushy and his tall ears shrunk as Wu Ling transformed himself into a squirrel. Wu Ling sprang into the willow tree and scrambled to the top. Chow will probably turn himself into a cat so he can climb up the tree after me, Wu Ling said to himself, but he'll never catch me. I'll jump from tree to tree and he won't be able to follow me. Of course, Chow thought and changing himself into a cat. But that's just what Wu Ling expects me to do, he said to himself. What can I do to surprise him? He thought, thought. I know, I'll swoop down upon him from above. He turned himself into a hawk. Chow circled round and round in the sky above the willow tree searching for Wu Ling. Wu Ling peered through the leaves of the tree, looking for Chow on the ground. Round and round, Chow circled the willow tree until he spied Wu Ling. Keep, keep, keep! He shrieked as he zoomed down upon the squirrel. Wu Ling trembled. Chow's beak looked sharp enough to pierce right through him. If only I lived in a shell house, he thought. Then Chow couldn't hurt me. Chow stuck out his fierce claws to, size Wu Ling, to seize Wu Ling, but Wu Ling dove toward the river below the willow tree, and as he dove, he tucked in his head and tail and legs, turned green, and changed into a, what you think? You're right, a turtle. Wu Ling climbed up on a mossy rock in the middle of the river. He thought he was safe because he looked as if he were part of a rock. Chow circled round and round, searching and searching until his sharp eyes spotted the turtle. Then he swooped down, down, down toward him. But just as Chow reached him, Wu Ling plunged into the water. Follow me and you'll drown, he cried. 
Don't worry, cried Chow, plunging right behind Wu Ling. His body grew longer, covered with scales. He whipped the water with his long, wicked tail. And he snapped his spike toothed jaws as he turned into a crocodile. Wu Ling circled round and round as he plunged down, down, down to the bottom of the river. Chow lashed his wicked tail as he plunged after Wu Ling. Just as they reached the bottom, Chow clamped Wu Ling into his spike-toothed mouth. Now I've got you, he bellowed through his clenched teeth. Oh no, you haven't, cried Wu Ling, who grew smaller and smaller and changed himself from green to gold as he transformed himself into a goldfish. And he swam out of Chow's mouth between his spiked teeth. Then he hid in a patch of cattails. Chow churned the water with his lashing tail as he charged into the pack. After Wu Ling, with his head swinging back and forth and his eyes darting here and there, he searched for Wu Ling. Wu Ling knew that Chow would not give up until he found him. I must fly from here, he thought, and he started to honk as he transformed himself into a... Goose. Chow charged after him, but Wu Ling spread his wings and took to the air. Chow watched him fly to a small island where a flock of geese were feeding. By now he was not only very angry, he was also very hungry. He decided that if he could not catch Wu Ling, any goose would make him a good dinner. He splashed through the water toward the island until he reached it. Honk, 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 cried Wu Ling, and he took to the air. A chorus of honks swelled the air as the flock of geese spread their wings to follow him. While Chow watched, the honking grew fainter. The flock grew smaller, and he felt his anger slowly drain away. Why, oh, why did we play that stupid game, he moaned. I'll never see Wu Ling again. He closed his eyes and sank toward the river's bottom. Just as he touched it, however, he had an idea. And up he popped again, a goose himself. Moments later, Chow was flying after Wu Ling and the other geese. He could hardly see or hear them at first, but he did not let this discourage him. Calling upon every last bit of his strength, he forged ahead. Each flap of his wings brought him closer. The wedge of geese slowly grew bigger. The honking grew louder. At last, Chow found himself flying beside Wu Ling. I'm tired of our silly game, he cried. Come back with me to our willow tree. Before Wu Ling could answer, something stung Chow's right wing. He sank toward the ground. What do you think it could be? A hunter had shot him. Wu Ling flew down beside Chow, placed his left wing under Chow's smashed right wing, <clears throat> and together they fluttered down to the edge of the forest. The hunter ran toward them. Fly away, Chow urged Wu Ling. Save yourself. Fly, fly. I won't desert you, cried Wu Ling, and with a mighty roar he changed into a... Line. The hunter raised his bow. Wu Ling sprang toward him and knocked the bow from his hand. The hunter fled, leaving his bow behind. Wu Ling and Chow returned to their fox shape, and Wu Ling helped Chow to his den, where he took care of him until he was mended. Did they ever play the game again, asked little Sue. Many times, said her grandfather, but they were very, very careful. That was a good story, said little Sue. Let's do another. Grandfather arranged his seven tangram pieces. In this story, 
Is this story going to be about a man? asked little Sue. Yes, said her grandfather. He's old and he's tired. He wants to sit under a tree and rest for a while. He is. Is he a grandfather like you? asked little Sue. Yes, said her grandfather. Just like me. Little Sue arranged the seven pieces of her tangram beside her grandfather. Is that a little girl? he asked. Yes, said little Sue. Just like me. She'll sit and rest beside the man. That will make him very happy, said Grandfather Tang. And now, little Sue, what will we do? We'll sit and rest together until Mother calls us for supper, said little Sue. That will make me very happy, said her grandfather. So as you know, we've been playing with tangrams in class. So your homework assignment, the third objective for tonight, the announcement of homework. Yes, you have homework. I would like for you to visit this website. If you need to pause the video, please do so. On this website, you're going to see virtual tangram puzzle pieces. You will see some of the animals that were spoke of in Grandfather Tang's story, as well as other shapes that you're going to try to create with your tangram pieces. Good luck, and when you come back tomorrow, be ready to write about it about your experience with the Tangram pieces in your math journal.